What is going on to all my Ozark fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. As I stated in my last Ozark Season 4 Part 2 spoiler free review that I want to come back and talk spoilers with you all and that's exactly what we're doing today. Today's video will be a breakdown scene by scene of episode 14 which was titled A Hard Way to Go which clocked in at an hour and 11 minutes. We're talking about the good decisions, the bad decisions our characters makes in this finale and of course I'm going to share my thoughts about that that last shot we're discussing that and so much more in this spoiler discussion but before we get into it make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts if you all are new to the channel and love early movie reviews tv breakdowns and live streams will come and join the community today by subscribing and hitting that notification bell and as you all can see on the screen now if you enjoy what i had to say in this video we'll make sure you're giving it a thumbs up and also sharing it but more importantly in the comments we're talking full spoilers so let me know all your thoughts about this second part in its entirety favorite episodes, favorite moments, but more specifically, let's talk about this 14th episode, what worked, what didn't work, and of course, your thoughts on the final shot. Let's discuss it all in the comments below. So hey, full spoilers, scene by scene breakdown, let's get into it as we open the episode with up until this point in the season, what I loved about my favorite character, Ruth, was this was a tale about revenge and this was her time to break that Laymore curse and everything up until this point was leading to the positives. Like she was going to get a happy ending. Her and I love Rachel's appearance in the final couple episodes. We got Tuck a couple episodes ago. I love all the, uh, the cameos that we got, especially the interesting one with Killer Mike. But at this point in the season, I'm like, she's going to get her happy ending. But unfortunately, it leads back to death and leads back to the Laymore curse because she's burying and hiding the body for no one can find in her new pool, Nelson's body, which we know, of course, Rachel killed him in the previous episode to save her own life. So I, at that moment, I'm just like, maybe that happy ending isn't coming from Ruth, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But Marty. Marty Bird, he has no more answers. He doesn't know what he can do at this point because his kids and Nathan has really has a strong hold on them. So he gives Ruth an ultimatum. And before we get into the ultimatum, I have to say it now. The entire relationship and the entire series of Ruth and the father-like figure and Marty that she saw him, I absolutely love that relationship. I felt so heartbroken that Marty, and I'm he picked his family at the end of the day, but I just... I was hoping that he would have figured out some way to save her at the end of the day, but he doesn't. But the moment here, the ultimate that he gives her, it's my kids. And listen, Ruth, I don't care if you kill Nathan, if you kidnap Nathan, get my kids back. If you don't do this, I will tell Camilla that you were responsible for killing her son, her son Javi, which let's just talk about that. If I do have a criticism about this part two... The way that they killed Javi to me felt a little too easy. Uh, now, I do love the switch up because if you saw the trailer of the season, they literally show you Ruth killing him, but it wasn't in the way that the trailer did it. She shot him in the office of Claire, but I just felt like at that point of his decision making, he would have had, and I know he probably never felt like Marty and Wendy and Claire was a threat to him, but I would have felt like at that time, he would have brought more people with him that late at night, but he went solo dolo and ended up getting killed by Ruth, but neither here nor there. Javi's dead. She killed him. And again, Marty's going to tell her, you're going to tell, you're going to get my kids back in the fold or I'm going to tell Camille what you did. And he was not bluffing. He was very serious about that. Let me know how you all felt about that relationship, how you felt about that decision. As we move on, we've been talking about Camilla. Let's talk about her here because at this point, she's agreed to take over the drug cartel, the Navarro portion of the drug cartel. She's going to take out her brother, but she wants reassurances, and we see the FBI give her those reassurances. And also, I want to talk about it now. Camilla was fantastic. Now, I, I wasn't the biggest fan of, I wanted more development between her, her son, and her brother. I would have loved more scenes with them. We unfortunately didn't get that. Like I mentioned, I was a little bit, a little bit underwhelmed with the, the lack of Javi. Now, obviously his death had huge implications to this season or this final part, but I would have wanted more scenes with that family dynamic because I thought it was just so interesting to see, you know, Camilla and her, her brother having conversations. And I always felt like, when we saw Camilla and Omar having those conversations to me and the decision that she makes all to me reminded me so much of Wendy and Ben. And since we're talking about Ben and this is on top of my mind now, when we had that episode, I want to say it was episode like 
9 or 10 when they opened what they showed us what happened to Ben I thought for a split second they were going to show us that Ben was still alive but no Nielsen did kill him but either here nor there we see that Camilla does get her reassurances but she still wants to know the truth no matter the power that she has family is very important to her and she was lied to throughout this season in regards to who actually killed her son but she's going to get the truth on that matter a little bit later but as we move on to Wendy Berg, at this point, she is willing to do anything to get her kids' attention, and she goes to the same mental hospital that she checked Ben in, and she has Ruth visit her, which the relationship I talked about, Marty and Ruth, the back and forth, the hatred between Wendy and Ruth come to full fruition here. They're having a conversation. Number one, Wendy had no idea what Marty had told Ruth, but she's like, oh, that is very surprising, but they make a promise to each other after all their beef Wendy promises, if you do bring my kids here, and I have to be the one to ultimately convince them to stay, but if you bring them here, I will convince Camilla. I won't tell her your secret. Unfortunately, like I said, that secret gets out from another character that has nothing to do with the birds in regards to that decision a little bit later. But I, I loved all the scenes between Wendy and Ruth. There was so much hate, so much tension. But at this point, we saw Wendy at her absolute lowest. Obviously, we saw her at her lowest in season three when she had to kill her brother or make that decision to do so. But the stuff that we got with Wendy in this season with her relationship with Nathan and her dad, how toxic and complicated it was. Wendy was at her lowest point this season, and I thought Laura Lenny was absolutely fantastic. Let me know what you all thought about that scene and also all the stuff that we've been talking about thus far. But getting back into the Ben conversation, I love the moment where we see Ruth tells Wendy, I really do wish I would have kept him in the hospital because he still would have been alive because that decision, that conversation is a big part into the conversation she has with her kids here in a little bit here. But Ruth talks to Nathan and I really enjoyed this scene here because we see again, I don't know why no one couldn't see through Nathan's BS that he clearly didn't care about those kids, but people were just on board. He's a holy man. He's a God fearing man. So people just thought that he had a clean slate and no one really saw that side of him that Wendy knew about his alcoholism and him really being like a jerk and an asshole. But we see that Ruth pays him a visit. They have a bit of a conversation. The whole like, yes, sir, and not cursing in front of him, that whole thing's dropped because again, she's afraid that her life's on the line. So she goes ahead and tells him, go ahead and tell me the truth, Nathan, of why you want these kids. And he tells her, I did it because I don't want her to win. I want my revenge. I want her to be just as embarrassed as I was when she embarrassed me as a kid and throughout the different times of our lives. So he didn't care about those kids. This whole theme, and I talked about it in my non-spoiler review, we saw so many characters putting themselves over others and getting revenge on others from the past actions that they did. Nathan wants to embarrass his daughter, which again just speaks to the toxicity in their complicated relationship. And this is where he's drinking like crazy. He goes and turns his back. You never turn your back on a laymore because when he turns around, she has the gun pointing at him. <laughs> And I don't know if you all made this correlation, but when she had the gun pointed at him and she told him, I'm going to shoot you in the head and not the one on your shoulders, I'm like, that is a young Darlene Snell if I ever seen one. And I've always thought that Darlene and Ruth had a lot of similarities in how they got stuff done, how like demanding they were to show people that just because I'm a woman, I can get shit done. And even though Darlene was a despicable character, I always appreciated her ruthlessness and I love how ruthless we saw Ruth in this season especially at that moment so the kids come into the room he tells them you know the truth we don't see him verbally explicitly say this is why I'm keeping the kids but we understand that this is the setup she was able to convince him to let the kids go as we transition to seeing Charlotte and Jonah facing having this incredible now I don't know which conversation was more heartfelt and truthful and honest both of them are great I'm talking of the moment when we saw early in this part two when Marty's sitting down talking to Charlotte and just pouring his heart out. And I was right there with Marty because there was multiple points in this part two that I felt like Camilla and Wendy are working side by side. Camilla's going to kill her brother and we're going to see Wendy kill her husband and Marty. I mean, there were many clues setting up that plot line, whether it was Wendy having that dream of killing Marty, whether it's, you know, seeing the similarities between the Snell family with Jacob and Darlene and ultimately Darlene killing her husband. I thought that by the end of this show, we were going to see that transition into Wendy killing her husband. That didn't come to fruition, but we do see the thing that we did know about Wendy, 
She's controlling. She wanted all the control. She talks about why she ended up taking on Ben because she wanted control of his life and situation and obviously show her father that she has the power and then correlate that to the kids. Now, she does love the kids. I don't want to confuse her anger and her control over her being a loving mother in a very weird way and a twisted way of loving her kids. But she did at the end of the day, she did love her kids, but it was all about the control. And we see at this moment, the kids have to, Charlotte's 18, Jonah's what, 15, 16. They're, you know, damn near adults at this point. They have to make a decision. She says, you know what? I'm not going to have control at this point. I'm going to give you all the choice. Live your own life with the grandpa. Or I don't know if you all want to see that. I don't know if you remember in part one when Charlotte and Jonah were in the cemetery and they were talking about going to like North Carolina or going to North Dakota and going in this cabin. I thought they were going to do that. They didn't do that. But we see that the kids, now someone adults, they make the decision. They, they want to stay together with their mom and their dad. And when they got into the car, I immediately went right back to episode one of part one. We opened that episode with the car crash. And this is the scene that sets up that car crash. Let's go ahead and talk about it. As we know how it played out, they get into the accident. And I'm, I would be lying if I didn't tell you all, I got a little teary at it because I thought when we see, I had a little bit of relief. I'm like, okay, Marty's alive. We see, uh, I believe the order was um, Jonah came out next. Charlotte came out after that. And even though I know she's the, the, I compare her to Cersei Lannister, I also compare her to Walter White in regards to Walter White becoming Heisenberg. She had that transition where she was good, she became evil, but I was still kind of like a little bit like, damn, is that the way Winnie's going to die? Because she wasn't moving, but she ends up moving. They pull her out. And literally, I love this metaphor that it shows us as an audience they literally can survive anything. And I remember this is a callback. I don't know if you all remember back to season one. I can't remember the drug cartel character's name, but he told Marty that their van is like the best security, like best protective van that you can get. So it did come to fruition because they flipped over and they survived that car crash, which completely a side note, that scene when we saw Marty and Wendy getting arrested because they got into a street fight, like out of all the things they got arrested for, they get arrested for that. But neither here nor there, going back to that moment, they survived the car crash, literally more, fed, more uh, you know, metaphorically speaking, they can survive anything as the family is now like hugging each other. They're like happy they're with each other. They go back home, which I'm not going to lie to you all. I thought that that was a dream. I thought that they did really die in that car crash and we were going to see all the events that played out and then cut back to that and show that they died, that they that was the end of their story. That would have been very bold. Now, there might be some theories out there that some people might think that they actually did die in the car crash. I don't think that's the case, but I thought that would have been a very bold decision. But they make it home alive. We see the priest even tells them. That's why I was like, are they dead? He says that that was a sign from God, Wendy. And she says, no, that's just a sign to show us that we can survive anything. And I love, by the way, I love the priest, how he was included in this season. And there was multiple times where I thought that the priest was more involved with some of the scheming going on. But no, he was a, a man of God. He didn't go to those lengths. But Camilla certainly did. She was, and I knew it. I knew that she was behind it. I knew it wasn't that one guy that was jealous of Omar and Javi. I knew it was her because she was the only one that Marty told those personal things to. So again, I'm going on a side tangent because I'm just thinking of all the crazy stuff that went down this season. But let's get back into the conversation as we now know that Omar is aware of Nelson's missings and he's starting to put the pieces together because we see that Omar... You talk about family and complications. And again, I compare Omar and Camilla to Wendy and Ben. He wants his sister dead. And we know that that is the other way around. <laughs> the sister wants her brother dead. Like I said, the power control and the complicated family here. He's saying that he knows that she was the one that put the hit out on him, which is the case. But she also, he believes that, and this kind of helped what I was like, oh, maybe, you know, Ruth's going to be okay because he thinks that it was Camilla that killed the, you know, bodyguard Nielsen. But so we see Marty and Winnie like, oh, oh this is all kind of working out to our favor. And he's, they're taking in all his orders like, you got me off the list. They're like, yep, we're working on that. Everything's looking good. And then he's like, you're taking care of this. And they're just like, they're saying yes, because in their mind, they know that they're, he's about to be dead by the end of this day when they transfer him to another jail. But Oh, man, do the tables turn very, very quickly. Let me know what you all thought about that dynamic between the brother and sister and whose side would you have been on? Now, obviously, they are going with Camilla, but pretty soon 
they have to make a decision, which I can't wait to talk about here in a second. But this season had so many great callbacks, and this was one of them. At this point, we see Ruth waking up. She smells some barbecue. She hears someone outside. She opens the door, and it's her dad. It's her uncle's. It's Wyatt on top of the uh, trailer, and I just thought that was such a cool moment. And her her niece, her nephew, or cousin, I should say, comes up and says, is, is Wyatt there? He says, yep. To me, I think that that moment for Ruth really kind of solidified that she, she broke the curse in her mind because she's the last one standing to a certain extent, but also she's at peace. She's at peace with all the decisions, all the death, all the stuff that led her up to this point. So whether she lived or she died, I think that she was at peace as a character at that point. Let me know if you all felt the same at that moment. So getting back to the theme of embarrassment and getting revenge, we see that Wendy gets her last laughing moment astray for him pulling the deal from him and not having his election go through the way that he wanted to. I thought that was a pretty funny moment, even though I thought that that plot and the whole Wilkes getting involved and the whole political stuff this season to me wasn't as strong as it was in the other seasons. But let's get back to Camilla at this point. She has all the things that she wanted. She got her reinsurances, but at the end of the day, she told us very early on, family's very important to her, and she still will not give up who killed her son. She's at the dinner table with the Bird family and Claire, and she is like she is questioning the hell out of Claire, and she tells her, I'm gonna give you one last chance to only, you know, lie to me. Do you know what happened to my son? And she tells her, if not, I'm going to cut you from you know what to your chin. And that that was the point. That was the breaking point. Claire fesses up. She tells her what happened. She didn't give away the birds, which I was surprised she didn't do that. She knows she still wants business to go. She still is greedy. She still wants her money. But she tells her, and this is where the decision has to be made by Marty because we see Camilla say, if they interfere with any decisions that's about to go down, you see that blonde there? Follow her. But you see their kids there? Kill them if they interfere. And at that point, I think that's when Marty said to himself, I love you, Ruth, but I cannot risk my family and my kids at risk. So he did not interfere, which I thought that he was. I thought that he was going to maybe make some call, make some decision. I thought he was going to maybe even call Ruth's other cousin and have him be on the roof to kill whoever was at her front door. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Marty made his decision who he wants to save. But before we get to that decision, because right now it's a suicide mission, do we side with Omar? Do we side with Camilla? We're going to talk about that here. But speaking of Omar, he thought that he was going to end up on top. They are driving him to a new, at first he thinks he's going to die. They're driving him to a new prison. He knows what's going on. He's, he's probably done this same tactic, right, as far as the order goes. The cop kills the the uh, the, the, the you know uh, the connection to the drug cartel. He kills the one cop. He tells Omar, "You're good to go." There's another car up at the hill for you. Gives him the gun. Omar is like, you know, he's like, oh, "I'm back." You know, I'm about to get back in business. He walks. He hears the gun kind of clicks. He turns around, realizes there's no bullets in there, and the guy kills Omar Navarro like that. Now. Uh, the way that he died is very poetic in regards to who made that call and then the whole twisted nature of you he thought that he was going to get away walk away from the situation that was not the case but i really do wish there was some a, a more impactful death in regards to how he died i wish it was maybe one of our characters marty wendy ruth of a certain extent or maybe even one of the kids who we'll talk about here but again i do it, it is a very I guess the way I look at it, it is very similar to the relation that I remember, that I compared this to, how Wendy, she couldn't kill Ben. She had someone else do it, right? And we see how that plays into Carmella having her brother die. Uh, so let me know how you all felt about Omar's death. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let's discuss that. But let's wrap up this episode in one of the most heartbreaking moments for me. Camilla Solo Dolo goes to Ruth's house. They have a conversation, I thought for a split second, that Carmella respected how at peace she was, how she went out on her own terms, a very roof kind of F you type of moment. Are we going to get this over with? And when she said that, I thought that someone was going to shoot Camilla, but nope. Camilla shoots and kills my favorite character, R.I.P. to Ruth Laymore. I, I talked about my thoughts, my feelings on Julia um, Gardner and the performance. My favorite character loved it. I got emotional during that moment because I thought that she was going to break the curse. I thought she was going to have her happy ending. She was going to build that house that her and Wyatt were talking about. But again, 
she was at peace with whatever decision, whatever happened to her, and she ultimately died again on her land, more or less, uh, the place of the, where the Laymores laid their heads, her family in particular, RIP to her. Did you all think that she deserved more? Did you want the happy ending? Let's discuss it in the comments. But wrapping up, like I said, Mari chose his family over Ruth. We go back to the birdhouse. Final moments here. There's a window broken. We see that it's male. He's on the trampoline. He has the goat. He has the evidence. He's going to spoil their whole parade. He tells them that's not how work life works. You're not the Kennedys. You're not going to get away with that. As soon as he says that, Shotgun, a character I've been kind of torn on as far as Jonah Berg. Now, what I love at first, I'm like, oh, this feels like kind of underwhelming. But the more I thought about it, I'm going to show you all some pictures on the screen. Now, if you remember this, this has been set up since the very early season with him and Buddy, him standing up for his family, his mom giving him the orders to kill that uh, that uh, drug cartel individual in the same look that she gave him, she gives him now. And more particularly, we see Marty gives him that same okay, like, you know what, son? Go ahead and kill this man to protect our family. We don't see him shoot Mel, but we are to assume there's three options. Now, he option one, he shot Mel. They're going to get rid of the body. They're going to get out of the drug cartel. They're going to be the leaders of the Midwest and live a happy ever life to a certain extent because all the stuff they have went through that changes you as a human being. They're never going to be the same. And particularly, we see what Jonah went through. There were moments when he didn't want to cross the edge, but now he's crossed that to that deep side of the water. He doesn't come back from that. So there is a happy ending of a, of a certain extent, but also this rottens you in the inside. So you're really not the same person you were before you went to the Ozark. So there's option A. He killed them, and they go on to live their life in a certain extent, right? Option two, because we don't hear a body drop, he shoots the evidence, shoots the you know his his uncle's belongings, and they tell him, "Get off our land! Don't bring you know don't bring any of your nonsense. You have no evidence." And he goes on about his business, knowing the truth, but he can't tell anyone because he doesn't have any evidence. Or kind of option three, which is kind of the same of option two, he shoots some he shoots in the air and threatens to give them back the evidence, and then it kind of goes back to option two. He just goes about his business. He doesn't tell the truth of what happened there, but. I think it's safe to say, even though we didn't hear a body drop, yeah, we saw Jonah kill Mel, and we saw that his parents gave him the okay, and unlike the last time when Wendy gave him the okay, when Buddy took the bullets out of the gun, the bullets were there, and now the family, who once were clean and, you know, to a certain extent, and a family that were willing to do whatever it takes to protect themselves, we see the kids finally step up, and particularly Noah, he kills them to protect his family, so... That is the end. That is the last shot, literally last shot of Ozark. Let me know what you all thought about the ending. What, how did you interpret the ending? Let me know how you felt about how Ruth was handled, Omar Navarro was handled, how Mel's character ended. And what do you think will happen with the Berg family moving forward? Will we get a, because I know this ending will be very divisive. Will we get a, I know they say this is the last season, but you know, there's enough backing up of the money that can maybe bring people back do you all want to see like a special one-off episode or like a movie like we got with breaking bad with el camino or do you want no more and just leave it up to our interpretation that they lived a happy life maybe it caught up to them eventually let me know your thoughts on all of that if you stuck around to this point in the video i appreciate you again i love this show i know it has its ups and its downs but at, at the end of the day i am a fan of this show and i thought from season one, 2017, to part two of season four of 2022, one of the best shows of all time, in my personal opinion, but share yours in the comments. Make sure you're liking the video, sharing it, leaving your thoughts in the comments section, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, that way you don't miss any of my future reviews. I love this show. I appreciate you all. As you can see on the screen now, come and join the community. Check out my other content. We'll catch you all on the next video.